pandemic has caused an unprecedented emphasis on cleanliness, disinfection and sanitation. While the demand has risen significantly, the industry is currently facing a significant labor shortage, also putting a strain on an already overburdened sector. For more on this, we're joined by Dr. Gavin McGregor-Skinner, Senior Director of the Global Biorisk Advisory Council, which is a division of the International Sanitation Supply Association. Thank you so much for coming on board. You're also one of the speakers at the Clean and Viral Summit, Dr. Gavin. One of the obvious reasons we just heard is the pandemic causing more than 47 million in the U.S. to resign from their jobs, and the cleaning industry is definitely not an exception. What are some of the other reasons for the manpower power crunch in this industry? Oh, it's very important that we live in a very exciting period of time with great technology, innovation, um, products and tools and equipment. The challenge we have right now is being able to train the cleaners that, that we need uh, within our airports, our hotels, our convention centres, our restaurants and all the other facilities uh, that we visit every day. So we're, we're really, we're at, at the moment, we're struggling with our training, our education. It takes time. But also to ensure that we incentivise the cleaning industry. We don't just focus on cleaning for appearance or cleaning for smell, we focus on cleaning for health and safety and we make those, those essential frontline employees, those cleaners which are so critical to our society, we make them feel needed and special. Well, the perception of cleaning programs has really shifted right now. It's not just about how clean it looks, but it's more of how clean it is, you know, tying to health reasons and, of course, a pandemic. Some experts say that with customer expectations continuing to shift, more organizations are basing their cleaning needs on risk levels. Why do you think this is so? Oh, this is so important because right now what the pandemic has taught us is that what gets what gets measured gets done and what we're seeing this evolution this 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 exponential growth of visualization of clean dashboards uh, companies and buildings being able to explain for the very first time this is how we clean for example the largest horizontal surface in the building is the floor. This is how we clean the air, the indoor air quality. This is how we clean those surfaces that everyone touches often, not just for infection prevention control, but also for the other contaminants. This is the way that we make an indoor space safe, where we spend so much of our time. And, and all these organisations are now being able to tell their story, explain to the users, the consumers, the public, the employees what they do. And this hadn't happened before. This, is, this wasn't happening in 2019. So now being able to explain that story based on science, based on evidence, is really ensuring that it's everyone's responsibility, responsibility when it comes to ensuring a clean, healthy and safe indoor space. Definitely everyone's responsibility. Let's speak about the gaps now. Do you see any gaps in terms of the knowledge and training, especially with the number of COVID cases currently on the downward trend? Do you think it is now time to fill in those gaps? It is. This is a great question because for all the other trades and uh, all the other uh, experts that are out there, the plumbers, the electricians, the laborers, they all have a formalized training program, a certification program. Where is that for the cleaning industry? Where is it for the frontline essential cleaners that are in our hotels, in our airports, in our restaurants every day? Where is that formalized cleaning curriculum and training program to ensure they use the technology like you're seeing here at this summit being used appropriately and properly? Again, when we look at the products that we use, there is a learning curve. There's an education curve. And many governments throughout the world, and again, many, many of the private sector aren't being responsible in delivering that education material to ensure the tools, the equipment and the products are used safely, sustainably, responsibly in, the, in, in, our, indoor, in, the, in our indoor spaces. Well then, do you think there is sufficient action and initiatives taken by government and even the industry to solve the labour shortage problem? No, not yet. No, there's not. Again, we're, we're seeing supply chain issues as well as this labour shortage. And again, if we can incentivise uh, through showing the value of clean, through measuring what gets done, to showing that these people actually contribute to safe and healthy indoor spaces, if we can actually show that through the dashboards that we've seen here at this conference being displayed down in the exhibition hall, if we can show the tools that we have to show that what people are doing can be quantified with real numbers, then that's where we're going to attract people to the cleaning industry. At the moment, it's a very, um, it's a very disincentivized uh, industry. Uh, the morale is low. 
people work really hard and we don't provide that positive feedback through say taking samples of the floor of the of the high touch surfaces even taking samples of the air to show that the indoor air quality is very good and healthy we don't do that often enough and that's where we're going to see a whole paradigm shift and change whether it be this year or next year this is what comes after the pandemic well let's turn to the abundance of technology today that may attract more to the industry do you think the emergence of robotics specifically autonomous mobile robots take away the tedious and time-consuming task allowing more employees really to focus on detailed and value-added work will entice them into this industry Yes, I do. I really do. I think this is going to be really, it's going to it has a very positive contribution to the industry. Again, it takes people to operate the, uh, the robots, to put the right chemical or the right product into these, these robotics that we're seeing displayed here at, at the exhibition uh, here in Singapore. So it's important that, again, we train those people appropriately, but more importantly, large spaces like this convention center for example or an airport or a hotel they, 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 these are enormous spaces to clean and, and our biggest enemy really is time and now not only time now it's that workforce shortage so again it's not going they're not going to replace the, the employees they're going to actually complement and, and strengthen the job that they do so it's important that we look at technology in a way that is useful and that the, the, more importantly we educate and train people on how to use these great examples of these robotics for example that we're seeing to use them the way that they're designed to use but also to measure what they do to, to validate what they do well thank you so much for those insights dr kevin mcgregor skinner senior director of the global biorisk advisory council which is a division of the international sanitation supply association